The decline of the northern bobwhite quail is very complex. They are a very complex bird, but I will say this. What were thriving huntable populations decades ago are not so anymore. And of course, there are all kinds of theories as to what has eliminated the wild quail throughout most of its range. When we first found and reported these worms, it got our attention. We realized and recognized this is a serious issue. They were embedded in the ducts in the rear of the eye. Ophthalmologists have told me the lacrimal duct is very nerve and capillary rich, and that's where these worms may build up dense numbers. We were really concerned about quail and their vision. As we learn more and more about the cecal worm, that's in the gut, in, in the intestines. They eat too. They are soaking away nutrition from the quail. No wonder these birds maybe are so challenged physiologically because they are losing energy from this. That quail has to be at the cutting edge athletically every day because they are constantly being pursued by predators. It impairs the quail such that even relatively small percentages of performance reduction occur that that bird becomes more at risk to not survive that day. We are very excited about you know collaborating with uh, Dr. Kendall on his uh, wildlife toxicology project uh, supported by FDA. We are supporting him on that with the our instrument and the facility and whatever he requires. So essentially for northern bobwhite quail, we assume that their decline in population is due to parasitic infection. So we've developed a medicated feed that has the necessary concentration to kill the parasites, right? What we're doing here is we're using this machine to measure how long it takes that compound to leave the bird system because it is a game bird and people do hunt and eat these quail. We've looked at West Texas and really focused a lot of our efforts there. We kind of view it as the Alamo of wild quail honey left in America. Hunters and fishermen want healthy wildlife and they want to see thriving populations. That's been our whole goal, is to be able to put into place technology and techniques for sustainable wild quail populations that will support honey. Because when you have hunters, you have conservation dollars. When they buy licenses, spend money on the pursuit of wild quail, they create an economic support that allows further research, further conservation efforts. So the way I see it, it all goes around. I'm proud to be a hunter and a fisherman. I don't get a chance to do it much anymore because I do all my time on the science and the time involved it takes to get this work done. we take a cloacal swab and we collect these species which um, has the eggs. We start this extraction process where they break the swabs in there. We'll also dip them in liquid nitrogen and that helps um, break open the tough exterior of the parasite egg and it allows us to actually extract the DNA that's inside the egg. First you add in your red dye which is going to have your DNA polymerase and your nucleotides and your salts and that's going to help amplify the DNA. We're gonna load the results of the PCR into this gel to visualize the pieces of DNA, the fragments, so you can see the DNA in the band that you try to amplify. We've been able to see already we can treat these quail. We can kill the worms, we know it, and not hurt the bird. These are very difficult scientific questions to answer. And it's taken thousands of hours of field experience and our field team out there. It's just very, very complicated science. And, and I just can't say enough about 
the research team and the wildlife toxicology laboratory because they refuse to give up. They refuse to not acknowledge that something's going on out there that's going to take our best effort, our best strategy, our hardest work to figure it out. It's really an amazing opportunity for scientists to be part of identifying the problem, but it's even more exciting for a scientist to be part of the solution.